right, so uh, my name is Evan Harrison, and I am presenting Chapter 20, uh, College of Executive <coughs> Death of the Nile. Um, before I get into my characters, I really just want to talk about um, what makes these following scenes really important in the film itself. Um, you know, like many cozies, the film, like Death of the Nile, it follows two different timelines. One that we see as an audience, and one that we don't see as an audience. One that's covered and masked by uh, individual actions and scenes that we don't see in the movie. Uh, and so for when I moved forward in, with my reinterpretation of the scenes, I knew that that was something that I really wanted to take into account, was the fact that there are two different timelines here. Um, and that not necessarily focusing necessarily on characters, but how we are portrayed that um, those two different scenes, or those two different timelines. Uh, and what we see in the movie is one thing, but the way that we connect those two timelines is through A, the setting, because that's one thing that combine both timelines, they both take place in the same setting. And we all see that through Perot. Uh, he's the one person that's omnipresent of the entire situation at hand. So, moving into my first scene. Uh, this is just a little bit of um, like some of my ideas as I was drawing them down. Um, and I knew that this first scene, I really wanted to focus on Poirot as the main character. You know, what is his thought on the situation um, and portraying the ideas that were in this first scene. And so this first scene, what happens is Jackie and Perot are on the deck, and Jackie comes to him, and she is just in you know desperation. She is, I am so sorry that I you know hurt Simon. I want to make things right. Can I make a meeting with him? And Perot is right now seeing Jackie through two different lenses: one as a suspect of this murder, and the second as you know this innocent girl who you know she's had been through a lot, this hardship. And so I started with Perot, and you can see Jackie in his eyes, right? Um, and so. You know, this is my starting point. And then I added this background, this tilted background, because it, it's a confusing scene. You know, you're not sure which way he's going to sway. Uh, is he going to be, you know, with Jackie on this decision, or is he going to look at her still as a suspect? And so with this, I knew like I could add color to make things more definite. And that's where I finally got to Jackie as either purple in one eye, purple being, you know, a very relaxing color, very cheerful, uh, and red, you know, resembling something more dominant. Um, Jackie on the one side as being very, you know, she's evil, she's a suspect, but the other side being very light. And then I made the purple background to show that, you know, this is Paro's end decision. He's, he agrees and he lets <coughs> her, you know, make her visit with Simon. So this becomes very obvious um, through this scene. But this is my first scene. The next scene after that is when Jackie is actually with Simon in the room. Um, and so what I have here is I have the two silhouettes of uh, Colonel Reyes and uh, Poirot as they watch the scene happening. Uh, and in this scene, there's two different things that are happening. One, Poirot and Colonel Reyes are seeing one thing. They see this, this makeup session of uh, Jackie and Simon as they closely, you know, they get over this hump in their relationship. Uh, but on the other hand, we also see this demonic side of the situation, which is, you know, they're plotting this, you know, what's going to happen next. And so when I first created the scene, I knew that the setting was the first main thing that was going to have to happen. You know, how do you create the space that the character is going to interact with? So I created a room, it doesn't really look like it here. Um, and then I added this black shadow background because there is like two sides to it. There's this side that we see, but then there's all this stuff that we don't see. Uh, so I wanted to portray that in the actual setting itself. Add in Poirot, or Poirot and Colonel Reyes. And then the characters. And I made them red because this is what they are. I mean, they in the end, they are the murderers. And, but to Poirot and Colonel Reyes, they don't see that. So how do we portray that? So I added their shadows as this purple heart because this is how they end up seeing them. Is you know, oh, you know, they're these two, you know, broken-hearted people. But you know, they're going to get back together. However, this wasn't strong enough because how do you correlate between that they understand this or um, Poirot and Colonel Reyes? So I finally added. Um, like this eye line that's like, oh, you know, it connects them, and then their purple bow ties and ties match the same color. This is how they are portraying them, even though this is the actual um, side of them that we see um, as an audience. Once again, going back to the two timelines. So this is my second scene. And then the third scene um, is when <coughs> Colonel Reyes is telling Poirot that, you know, we had the, the wine switched out because it tasted moldy. Uh, and Poirot takes this very curiously. He said, like, he's like, hmm, that's very fascinating. And if you remember the scene, you'll know that this was actually a very climatic situation. Like, this is one of the beginning climaxes of the movie. Uh, we see all the characters, or most of them, sitting down, the suspects that are left. Um, and they're all spread out so that we have an even shot of all of them. So I wanted to portray a lot of the different characters in the scene, but I wanted to give it through Poirot's perspective. 
you know, he sees this glass or this wine bottle, and he thinks to himself, "Oh, well, you know, this is this is interesting because this is a clue." Um, and so what I did was I took the perspective of Poirot looking at this wine bottle. So I took the wine bottle and put it in, um, and then I added Poirot a distance from it because you know he's looking at this object from afar. He's trying to think all around the object. What does it mean? What does it interpret? Uh, what can he can interpret from it? And then. From there, I had these bubbles, you know, coming out of a wine glass um, with different characters in them, uh, just as like a you know pre sketch that you know each bubble represents a different character, a different motive, a different you know how does this bottle relate to everybody <coughs> in the room? Um, and so instead of having the room, we have this situation set up. But there was too much white space in the scene, uh, and I knew that it wasn't going to be strong enough. Um, so I added this red line again, correlating this red bottle with you know this. Um, line across once again showing the confusion of the situation, but also you know there's this Poirot's in the red, right? And then it's also the same red as the bottle, meaning that you know he's been poisoned at one point. This bottle is more related to him than he thought. And then instead of going with all the characters, you know there's a lot on his mind. It's not just characters. It's different scenes and um, you know hints and clues. So here I have you know the necklace here, the gun here, uh, and then different characters you know spread out. Was it um, you know Miss Bowers? Was it Uncle Andrews? Uh, it could have been Lynette, or it could have been, or, or not Lynette, um, I'm sorry, Jackie, it could have been um, Simon. So, you know, this is my final scene of this one, uh, or scene three, of him just wondering uh, what is it like this mean in its entirety. So, from the beginning, scene one, scene two, and scene three. Um, I really appreciate one your charisma while you're up there presenting like one as a design student and then anyone who's gonna have a job at any point in your life you have to have like that sense of confidence and you could have been talking about something that was completely false but the way that you were so quick with your words and um, your diction and all the things you just had this confidence that made me believe whatever you were saying um, although you, what you did do was great and it was right um, so that was really cool. I liked that. And then um, the fact that you sketched out what you had thought about in your mind, I thought was really cool because you definitely, with your process work, you created exactly what you wanted. And I think it looks really nice. Thank you. Um, when you're sketching, did you take pictures of them? Yeah, I did. Scan it. Yeah. yeah it's going to look a lot better when you scan it and like, if you play with like the white balance in Photoshop. But I really appreciate the process work. Right? Yeah, I don't think you need perfection right there, but you're right, it's scanning it is it's quicker sort of thing. Let's put it, talk about the content and what he's done here. I agree, this very nice presentation mode, and yeah, when you have a job you're going to have to proceed, even if your throat's sore and what have you, you did a very good job working through that. Michael? Um, I will say one thing, uh, it's actually related to all three of your final scenes. Uh, I noticed on scene one and scene three, I think it was, that you were very, uh, I guess you'd say very figuratively, not figurative, but again, scene two, you were very, like, abstract. Like, there was no details really, it was just very simple, which is amazing for what it is. <coughs> While scene one and scene three were a little bit more precise, if you will. Um, maybe try to stay a little bit more consistent. Uh, either A, make it all abstract, or B, make it all consistent so it all just kind of flows together and isn't like a spaced out sort of thing. Sure. I really appreciate the composition um, and all of them. It's really nice. Um, I really like that you changed your scene three. Um, from having just characters in the bubbles to having um, pieces and puzzles or pieces of the puzzle uh, in the bubbles instead of characters because that really brings in the whole story as, a, as an entity, as a, as a movie. Um, and uh, I, I really appreciate that, that you did that in the bubbles. Yeah, and it also reflects the way Wabro is, is bad. I mean, he's not 
merely looking at the people, but he's trying to figure out how the various things that are involved fit together. Yeah. Um, it's got a very different style than mm -hmm. all the other ones we've seen so far. I like it. Uh, the only thing that I'd do differently would be um, you have Poirot in all three scenes. In the first scene, you've got his face and you got the round shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then in the second scene, you got the round body again, <coughs> as much as we can see. Then you switched over to hard, jagged lines for the third scene. So if you just kept the body types throughout all the same, then it yeah. would be more unified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I would go with the rounder portion, too. That it's more quadro than... Yeah. Because actually, when I first looked at the slide, I thought, that was race rather than Poirot. And yeah. Then I thought about it for a second and said, no, it must be Poirot. But I think you do need to do that. I think the first and the third are the strongest slides for me. I have a little more difficulty making the, um, because of having the shadow and the eye line. Yeah, there. it becomes one figure. Yeah, I, I'm not, not as, on it, I'm not quite sure what else you could do. Does anybody else have an idea for that? Maybe one that would allow you to keep the shadow a shadow? But um, You could have kept the shadow a shadow instead of having the like purple triangle as their line of sight, put the halves of their, like the, peak, the side that Colonel Race and Poirot were seeing, make those purple. So to what they're seeing, they're seeing their purple side of them, but we all know that they have their red side. And that they so see. take like take half of their bodies and like so like the back of half of Jackie, red or or orange purple, and then like the front half of Simon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought about that. Mm -hmm. I that was something I considered. Um, you might, in order to do that though, you might have to have the figures a little larger to yeah. make it right. work for people, but. Some other ideas? Um, along with taking out the line of sight thing you had, you could do purple in the eyes of the two, Colonel Wraith and um, Burrow, to show that that's what they see. Yeah. The side of it. That's actually, I, I was considering giving them eyes too. Um, that probably would have been something that would have helped it. Uh, mm -hmm. this, pe this piece, but um, I kind of wanted to keep their silhouettes, mm -hmm. like that they were out of the room, um, mm -hmm. not necessarily in it, you know, like, they were distanced from it. Yeah. I mean, I really like Sam's idea, so I would definitely go with that, but my first thought was you could just, like, have, like, don't fill that in with, like, completely purple, just have, like, an outline of purple, mm -hmm. so it's not as intense and in your face. Yeah, I was thinking about, like, outlining the heart in black, too, that might have been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, can you explain to me really quick uh, your reasoning behind the purple stripe in the first scene again? Yeah. Um, so, oh, I guess that's what um, what like what's happening in that scene is Jackie's trying to convince him that you know, um, you know she wants to go see Simon and Poirot is you know he's in this situation where he has to view everybody as both a suspect but also see them for their real like you know. Who they are or who they portray, uh, and in this case, you know, Poirot sees Jackie two ways, both as a suspect and as you know this human being who's gone through hardship. Um, and by granting her that her wish to go see Simon, he's basically saying, "All right, I can side with this side of you know Jackie instead of the other one." Um, had he not given that, you know, the background might have been red. Um, it just you know by giving it this purple feel, it's like you know he is agreeing with one side instead of the other. Um, might I suggest with the purple stripe, because I don't think he completely gives her the clear go-ahead, maybe having some sort of way to tie in the, he's still questioning Jackie, but he's allowing her this one time, this is just nitpicky, but um, he still sees her as a suspect, even though he's granting her as, granting her a visit. So maybe right on the yeah. Yeah. I agree with that as well. I just, I think the way that, um, you kind of like you have said it is different than the way you're trying to portray it. Yeah.
I think um, that's one of the problems with trying to rationalize <coughs> and, like the entire piece into a, one mm -hmm. bit is that you know. Definitely get picky, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing I would do with that, and this is very small, let me take a second. I think I'd move the right hand hand side of the purple over another half inch or something. Yeah. Because if eyes get really drawn right to, into that curve there, and you want it definitely to background more than it would be a part of and um, if you make a change to that one, okay, if you don't, I follow what you're doing there too. I think it's the second one that most needs attention. I agree. But it's, it's overall, it's a real re-envision, and, and that is a little bit difficult to do with this particular section. People aren't always very, I don't know, they're not always very successful in any kind of re-envisioning, because so much of it is suggested as the cerebral element, the little gray cells, as Poirot calls them, going on there. I think you've done a really good job with a, a tough section. Other questions or comments on it? Okay.